Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here, of course, once again, with our next episode of Geography Now, doing every country in the world, of course, but we're on to Samoa. Samoa, I definitely heard this name before, but it's about it. That's about it. So without further ado, we're just going to jump into this one. And uh, yeah, please hit that like and subscribe button below. Please and thank you. And yeah. I guess, oh yeah, because I guess during the taping, you yeah, got April 15th. So I'm yeah, COVID was in like full bloom right now. So he, he couldn't really go anywhere. So he's back in the office. If Polynesia was a family, Samoa would be kind of like the kingpin great-grandfather. Technically, every Samoan is considered royalty. But it all comes down to how good of a royal can you be? I mean, sure, if you got ties to the Ainga Tupu, it helps. But anything is up for grabs in Ofono Omatai if your Falupenga is on point. I want to be royalty. I'm going to change my name to King Snowman. King Canadian Snowman. That would be pretty cool to be royalty, man. Anyways, I just interrupted him. <laughs> that Ainga Tupu it helps but anything is up for grabs in Ofono Omatai if your Falupenga is on point and once you got the Tama a Ainga title you can secure a spot as the Ola Ao Ola Malo okay sure whatever it's you said geography now this is gonna be a fun episode I love the Pacific Island nations because they are some of the least studied places on earth with some of the most vibrant stories and traditions also yes we did have a social media campaign to try and get Dwayne the Rock Johnson in this episode art and I actually kind of went up to his management office in Beverly Hills to see if we could reach out to him yeah so we showed up at his management office and it was kind of awkward they kind of looked at us like we're like from outer space or something like that. <laughs> yeah we got told we got rejected we so got hard. rejected so bad <laughs> It's like, and then the whole coronavirus thing happened, uh, so uh, we probably wouldn't have. I bet you that the, the offer didn't even go on like The Rock's desk. I bet the people are just like, okay, sure, we'll let him know. And then they walked out and then just forgot about the moment they walked out. That's like, that'd be so cool to see The Rock on here. And, and it would have brought a lot of light to, the, to their channel and everything, and that would be really cool. So, anyways. So hard. Rejected so bad. It's like, and then the whole coronavirus thing happened, uh, so uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to film with him anyway. So, right, we <laughs> overshot the runway too much on this. We're worthless. Anyway, in compliance with social distancing practices, obviously Caleb and Jillian live in my house, so they're cool with being in these episodes. Art is one of my closest neighbors. We walk, live within walking distance, so Art's gonna be in these episodes too. And Just, his mom makes really good chicken soup, so it's literally the only reason why I come over here. And uh, we will have occasional guest stars, but only one at a time, Keith, Noah, and Hannah. That's how this is gonna work out. All right, anyway, let's uh, jump into the episode. Samoa. Do it. You can't have Polynesia without starting and branching out from Samoa. All the Polynesian cousins sailed their ships out from Samoa at one point. And let's see where that point is on the map. The country is located in Oceania in the Pacific Ocean, specifically in the largest subregion known as Polynesia, shaped like a triangle starting in New Zealand, going up to Hawaii, and ending in Easter Island. Polynesia has over a thousand islands and archipelagos straddling millions of square kilometers of ocean territory. Samoa, though, is located about halfway between New Zealand and Hawaii, sandwiched between their cousins Tuvalu and Tonga. Now keep in mind the independent nation of Samoa is different from the US overseas territory of American Samoa which sits at the shortest oh. distance less than 100 miles or 160 kilometers away. Keep in mind though the most absolutely mind-boggling I, I was confused about that because I thought Samoa is like maybe not you know I, I, I kind of didn't realize that there was actually two different ones so I learned something anyways than 100 miles or 160 kilometers away. Keep in mind though, the most absolutely mind-boggling thing between these islands is that they are literally divided by the international date line, which means they share the same time of day, but are exactly 24 hours apart, with American Samoa perpetually living in yesterday land and Samoa in Tomorrowland. Technically, cool. you can go to the future or past within a quick 35 minute flight between them. This is kind of why people typically buy two one-way tickets instead of a round-trip package when traveling between the two islands. It's like, wow, American Samoa was pretty cool but i think i'll just take one of those 35 minute flights over to the country of samoa when will i arrive in just over 24 hours wait what how is that even possible well when will i return yesterday 
Yeah, it can be a nightmare if you've never done it before. In any case, the country wow. is made up of two main islands that make up about 99% of the landmass, Upolu, where about 75% of the population lives, and Savai'i, which has the remaining 25%. In addition, there are other smaller islands and rocks, such as Manono and Apolima in the Apolima Strait, the four Alepata Islands in the east off the coast of Opolu, Nuutele, Nuuala, Fanuatapu, and Namua, and finally, small little in the south just by the town of Putasi. Out of these islands, the country is divided divided into 11 Itumalo, or political districts, which are actually tied into historical Samoan communities that predate European contact. And the capital of the country, Apia, is located on the north side of Opolu Island. The country has one main international airport, Faleolo International. Otherwise, the country has three other regional airports on Savai, whereas Upolu has this extra one, but it was closed in 2019, but it might reopen. The locals are always arguing about it. From there, each island has a ring road that goes around the coasts and ferry services services operate between the islands daily, as well as ferries and flights between them and the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Keep in mind, all together, Samoa and American Samoa are collectively just called the Samoan Islands. However, sometimes to make the distinction, you might hear the titles Western Samoa for Samoa and American Samoa or East Samoa for the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Yeah, in 2011, they actually moved the country's date ahead one day and skipped December 30th. This was actually done to kind of boost their trade relations with New Zealand and Australia. It was like, hey, New Zealand, it's Friday. Let's do some export deals. Oh, sorry, man. Even though you're like one longitude length away, it's Saturday here and our offices are closed on weekends, man. Oh, sh all right, look, man, this is ridiculous. This whole you being in yesterday thing is kind of stupid. Just switch it up and join our side. Eh, you're right. Hey, American Samoa. Nah, I'm them. Fun fact, each Itumalo actually kind of has their own constitution called a Fa'ava'e, based on the order of each district's falupenga. What is a falupenga? Basically, it's like a special greeting that each of the districts- I just, for the, for the, if anybody's actually watching this from Samoa, is it really confusing or is it, is it can get annoying? Like the whole like, uh, time difference thing when you're kind of going back and forth or, like this is the thing with Australia, you know, that, I don't know, it, it seems very confusing, but I'm sure if you live there, it's pretty straightforward and it's like nothing, right? But admit, it, it makes it feel like it's really frustrating. Anyways. District chiefs have to memorize when they go and visit another district chief. So it's like a passcode or something. No, it's a formal greeting acknowledging the history and lineage of the village and introducing yourself based off of your lineage and history. And it's all spoken in proper Samoan. So it's like a Shakespearean greeting. Eh, kind of? You have to be very eloquent if you're going to be one of the orator chiefs. For example, like this. <laughs> Anyway, if you decide to visit, some top notable spots that you guys, the Samoan geography suggested I mention in this episode include the Market or Maketi Fu, the Samoan Cultural Village, the Robert Louis Stevenson Museum, the EFKS Museum of Fine Arts, the Falea Lupo Ruins, Mosul's Footprint, the Salea Ula Lava Field Ruins, the largest yeah. fale at the University of Samoa, the ancient star mound of Manono Island, the House of Rock, the Vanya Taole Alo Gallery, the Government House. There are many churches and places of worship like these, and there are so All right, quick question about the House of Rock. Uh, is it like, is that how like, someone actually lived there? Or is it just kind of like, a, you know, just that's just how it just looks like a house? Or, you know, it could just because of the formation of it. So they call, just call it a house. Or does someone actually live there or did live there? I don't know. It's a cave, right? Caveman, you know? So many natural spots and so many waterfalls. The most famous waterfall probably being Papapapai Tai Falls. And there's so many caves as well, like the Dwarfs Caves and the Piula Cave Pools. Cool. The most famous notable spot in Landmark though would probably be the Pule Mele Pyramid Mound. Also keep in mind, they do have a lot of amazing beach. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was definitely, pyramids and stuff like that, stuff that's made like thousands of years ago. Uh, that'd be kind of cool to check out. So that'd be probably on the top of my list. Besides the beautiful beaches, obviously. But everyone, every place has, you know, there's a lot of places that have beautiful beaches. So you kind of want to check out the things that you can't get, you know, anywhere else. So, yeah. Back it up. Cool caves. Like, check out some caves.
Park though would probably be the Pule Mele Pyramid Mound. Also keep in mind they do have a lot of amazing beaches but almost none of them are public because they are owned by families or villages so you'll have to pay a little fee to get on the beach. But anyway speaking of what? beaches and natural landscape now let's be for real. When you're in the middle of the ocean alone and isolated, every little bit of land matters. And with Samoa, they got kind of the jackpot. First of all, Samoa lies on the Pacific Plate right at the top of the Tonga Trench, part of a larger highly volcanic area known as the Ring of Fire that circumvents the fringes of the entire Pacific Ocean. The volcanic activity is essentially what formed the islands as it lies on the Samoa hotspot, one of many noted magma plume upwellings that can be found scattered throughout the oceans of the world. Only one volcano is classified as active, Mount Matavanu on Savai Island, which last erupted for six years continuously between 1905 and 1911. It formed about 40 square miles or 100 square kilometers of new land in the form of a lava field on the north side. The tallest peak of the country though is Mount Silisili, which means highest, which is also located on Savai and is a dormant stratovolcano. From here, the two longest rivers, the Vaimali and Maliolio rivers, flow downward from the central Savai mountain spine. The largest inland body of fresh water, however, is actually Lake Lanoto'o, a small creek crater lake found on the top of a hill on Upolu Island just south of the capital. As an equatorial nation, they fall within the monsoon climate zone where temperatures are consistently warm almost year-round and the rainy season lasts between November and April. Occasionally, they okay. might find themselves in the past of tropical storms or cyclones as well. Another cool thing is that Samoa was kind of volcanically formed a little different from all the other Polynesian islands. The distinct lava flow on the sides of Savai Island were carved by strong waves creating a complex underground cave system that eventually tunneled up upwards to the surface, which is where you get the famous alofaga or taga blowholes. These water jets are created by pressure that flows into the tunnels from the ocean. Sometimes people like putting coconuts on these water jets and then blasting them upwards. Now as a tropical Polynesian nation, of course, yes, Samoa is very lush and green. About a fifth of the land is arable and about two thirds of the country are either employed or involved in agriculture. Agricultural products and fishing in themselves make up about 90% of exports, whereas the service sector employs about half of the workforce, mostly in tourism and hospitality, which make up about a quarter of their GDP. Nearly a quarter million people travel to Samoa and visit every single year. And the number has actually been growing quite a bit in the past few years as Polynesian travel publicity has skyrocketed, you know, with the help of notable Polynesian based movies and films and stars highlighting their hair. Yeah, I bet a lot of places are gonna get an influx of tourism. I mean, they, after this coronavirus thing, cause you know, we're kind of, kind of getting over it, you know, you know, you're starting to get over it so i think a lot of people are want to get out of their houses they want to like see some new scenery there's gonna be a lot of travel going on so yeah guys definitely expect some in samoa you know, with the help of notable Polynesian based movies and films and stars highlighting their heritage. I mean, Hobbs and Shaw, dang, Mr. Rock, I will never forget that Uso battle scene or the helicopter car chain thing. That's Samoa! In addition, Samoa is known for having a wide array of unique animal species. And with that, it's time for our animal correspondent, Gary Harlow, no. to step in. Jillian. Hi, hey guys. Oh. oh. Um, Caleb's, I mean, Gary Harlow's not here right now. He's actually deworming up. Uh, blue uh, elephant, but um. Uh, we need someone to do this though. You got like many other islands of the Pacific, Samoa doesn't have any endemic mammal species. The only no true ones being bats and Polynesian rodents. Pigs, dogs, and cats are all over, but were introduced to the islands later by people. Otherwise, the country is loaded with reptiles like the native Samoan skink, the Polynesian gecko, and the Pacific boa. Heaps of marine species like parrotfish, surgeonfish, yellowfin tuna, and whales, and birds are everywhere. Over 80% are endemic and found nowhere else on Earth, like the Samoan flycatcher, the Mao, Fantail, and the national animal, the Manomea, or tooth-billed pigeon. And that's it for me. Oh. Bye. Yay. Wow, animals went by pretty quickly. But I guess, you know, the islands, you're always, they're always gonna showcase the cool fish because obviously it's an island. And islands always have cool uh, birds because the cool birds want to eat the cool fish, right? That's kind of how it works, right? So, yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. Tooth-filled pigeon. And that's, that's it for me. Whee!
<laughs> and now we finish off this segment as we always do. Food! Here are some of the top notable dishes of Samoa that you guys, the Samoa Fish geography bad. suggested I mentioned. Fai'ai Eleni, Palusami, Fa'ali Fu Fa'i, Ota'ia, Sua'ia, Fa'ausi, Kopai, Pani Popo, Pani Keke, Keke Pu'a'a, Keke Saina, Sua'fa'i, and very often at celebrations or occasions or even just on Sundays, you'll see the umus happening all the time. Yeah, Samoans are incredibly communal people. They take filial pie. I don't even know what like, most of that even was because of the name. And I was trying to look at it and kind of just dissect what kind of food that was, like what was in it. And yeah, kind of my mind was just like, what is this? So I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if I'd like it or not because I really don't know what's in it. <laughs> Who's happening all the time? Yeah, Samoans are incredibly communal people. They take filial piety and ancestor veneration to a whole new level. And with that, that brings us to... Demographics. Now when it comes to Samoa, you kind of have to know Fa'a Samoa, or the Samoan way. Every true Samoan knows about this, and in some way, shape, or form, to some degree, it affects their life. Everything you are and have, from land to water to birthright, are rooted back to the start. It's hard to understand, we'll explain in a bit. But first! Samoa has about 200,000 people and is the country with the highest population of native Polynesians in the world, and there are actually even more Samoans living abroad than there are in Samoa at about 600,000 globally. The country is made up primarily of native Samoan people, a Polynesian group at about 92% of the population. About 7% are Uranesians, whom are people that are mixed with European and Islander ancestry, in this case mostly half Samoan people. And the remainder of the population is mostly white and East Asian, coming from countries like South Korea and China. They use the Tala as their currency, they use the type I plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. The main official language of the country, of course, is Samoan. It is the most prominently spoken Polynesian language in the world. And after that, English is co-official. Official. Again, they have a history with the British and New Zealanders, blah, blah, blah. Believe it or not, if World War I did not happen, Samoa actually might have been speaking German today. In any case, back to the confusing lineage thing. There's a saying in Samoan, ole ala ile pule, ole tautua, which means the path to leadership is through service. Samoa has a very unique system that fuses both modern and traditional ruling systems. Today, their government is classified as a parliamentary republic. However, it takes strongly into account the traditional fa'amatai system. What is the fa'amatai system? <laughs> well, it's actually pretty simple, see? It all starts out with the four original Paramount Chieftain Dynasty families that created the nation known as Atama Ainga. There is also a fifth one for American Samoa, but technically that one doesn't count. Keep in mind the head of state or ceremonial president or the Ole Ao Ole Malo always has one or more of these titles in his name. From these four dynasties, the 16 royal families or the Ainga Tupu were created. They were the ones that originally ruled the Itumalo. From there, the towns and villages have a Matai, which means chief. They meet in a Fono o Matai or council of other chiefs. You can be a regular Matai or a Matai Sili, which means high level chief. The chiefs come in two forms, the ali'i or head chief and the tulafale or orator chief who does all the talking, debating, and announcing. When Can anyone become a chief or like you have to be like kind of born to like the, a family to have that role or can you just be popular and then become a chief? You know, like if you move there, is it possible to become a chief? I'm just wondering. I want to be a chief. The Ali'i or head chief and the Tulafale or orator chief who does all the talking, debating, and announcing. Once you are a Matai, you are generally expected to hold the title until you die. On rare occasions, will they cede the title? Keep in mind, off to the sides, there might also be a Pule Nu'u, a lower level assistant who helps facilitate the Matai duties. From there, you have a Taupo, a chief's daughter or female relative, usually from the Ali'i. She holds an important role in preparing the Ava ceremony for the Matai events. Sometimes a male or Manaya can hold this role too, but often it is female. If a Matai dies or is somehow unable to hold the title and it becomes available, every Everyone in the immediate family is a suli or candidate heir to the Matai title. And a series of speeches or concessions begin to find who will become the next Matai. Okay, so that means no, right? Pretty much no. I could. Okay. Just, just make him get things straight heir to the Matai title, and a series of speeches or concessions begin to find who will become the next Matai. Both men and women can fill the role, however statistically about 90% of Matai have been men, and about 10% have been female. From there you have the unranked plain village people, or the Tangatanu, or the Taule Alea, usually made up of younger people or people uninterested in holding traditional titles. See? Simple! Also keep in mind, the Ava Oops. ceremony is incredibly important to Samoan culture. It's used for all occasions, but especially for the Matai title bestowing ceremonies, like when a new Matai becomes a Matai. The bitter drink is prepared by people called the Aumaga using a Tanoa bowl and wringing out the roots of the mildly psychoactive kava plant. If you see this, then y'all know that some serious 
is going on. Taking all of that into account, you can probably see by now that Samoa is very steadfast in maintaining tradition and culture. Faith-wise, Samoa is pretty religious. About 98% of the population is Christian, the largest groups being Protestant-based. And often you might even find yourself in the middle of a prayer session. If you do, just be respectful, tone it down a little bit, or you can even participate if you want. Traditionally though, their ancestors followed a form of Polynesian mythology that had numerous deities and spirits called Atua and Aitu. Interestingly enough, Statistically, Polynesia is one of the few areas on Earth which has a birth rate of males that is higher than that of females. Today, the ratio sits at around 1.07 to 1 in Samoa. Anyway, the traditional house is called a fale, a round, thick, thatched roof gazebo type of structure with no walls, but blinds or nets can be draped down on the sides in between the columns holding up the roof. I mean, the weather is almost warm consistently throughout the year, so Samoans didn't really have to worry about insulation. Fine mats called toga are probably the most prized artifact of the country. They're used in all occasions. They're given away as gifts at weddings and ceremonies and so on. They're used for everything, even when you want to seek forgiveness from someone that you've wronged. So I bet you, like, you, that's one of those easy things to get, like, at the tourist shop. You could probably buy one of those cool things, right? I bet you can. It's actually even a tradition for them to cover themselves in a toga outside of the person's house with their extended family members as a sign of atonement. Often you will see people wearing lava lava cloth. It's the national cloth of the country, worn both by men and women. Usually men will just drape it around their waists. Women will make it into a body wrap dress. During celebrations, ceremonies, whatever, you might often find men doing the fa'a taupati slap dance and the slower, more poised siva dance by women. Speaking of which, they have a ton of cool festivals like the Fire Knife Festival, the Faltasi outrigger canoe competition, cool. the Tafasila Fa'i festival, and the biggest one... I see the canoe stuff. Hold on a second. That's what's really cool right there, the fire stuff. Festival, the Faltasi... That looks cool, man. It's like they're going to war. Man, that'd be scary, though, dude, if you didn't realize this was going on. And so you paid to, you know, to... You rented out the beach for the day because, obviously, there's no, like, public beaches, apparently. So, you like, you just, you know, go to someone's house, you pay them to kind of chill on their beach... And then all of a sudden you see like these like canoes, kayaks are like coming at you and man, that would And they probably do some ch cool chants as well, so that would be scary. Outrigger Canoe Competition, the Tafasila Fa'i Festival, and the biggest one, Tewila, held around September with the biggest activities, performances, and cuisine displays. And then you get to the traditional tattoos, made out of shark's teeth and soot. And I'm getting kind of tired of all this, actually. You know what, Art? Just just host host this Glad segment. Let's see, I'm your second you're, you're the last. Choice. You're the last resort, so yeah. The last resort. Now, across Polynesia, you'll see tattoos everywhere as they are a universal rite of passage. But each island and country has their own unique way of doing it. Unlike their cousins, the Maori. Samoan tattoos don't have spirals or curves. They're typically straight, geometric, and extend from the ribcage to the knees. Men's tattoos are called pea, and women's are called malu. And for women, the tattoos only extend from the thighs to the knees. It's a well-known fact that Samoans are famous for their athletic prowess. Historically, the Polynesian men were trained to be big and strong for warfare and competition. I mean, they even had some really cool weaponry. They had an impressive assortment of clubs, axes, daggers, maces, and cool. spears. Did I just say daggers? You said daggers. Did I just say dagger? <laughs> daggers. Anthropologists speculate that in addition to the possible genetic predisposition to gain more muscle, the abundance of available sustenance year-round on the island or seas around them allowed them to eat more and gain more mass. On the downside, Samoa and other Pacific islands have some of the highest rates of obesity as well as other health-related problems. In any case, Samoan and Pacific Islander men are top contenders for recruiting seasons in rugby be in American football leagues. In the NFL, a Samoan male is often somewhere around 40 to 60 times more likely to be recruited against a non-Samoan counterparts, especially for a lineman or linebacker position because they are freaking huge and the NFL wants huge people. You played football too, Art, didn't you? I did play football. Yes, I did. I might be considered big, but those guys are like really big. Uh -huh. Speaking of big, Keith, he's been <laughs> eating a sandwich. <laughs> you jealous? You jealous of this I've never oh spanked a belly <laughs> like that before. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, uh, by the way, it's my buddy's band, Protein Collective. They're sick. Go check them out. Due to fair use laws, don't sue us or placement or whatever. Just don't sue. As a Polynesian country, Samoa is heavily rooted in traditional sounds. As a country with no formal writing system, they depend heavily on oral tradition by documenting incidents through song and dance. Samoans love singing. Check out the Samoan high note challenge. Those videos are hilarious. <laughs> Much of the music what? can be performed with traditional instruments like these. And maybe some of these. Otherwise, today, modern genres like Samoan style R&B, poly reggae, and like jazz have made waves of popularity amongst the younger generation. Well, since I don't have a bass today, I guess I can uke my way on out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. And now it's time for the very condensed history segment of this episode. In the quickest way I can put it, Austronesians sail in and settle Samoa. The four Tama Aiga chieftain dynasties begin. The legendary warrior queen Nanafuna starts the Matai system. The Ainga Tupu royal family is established. More of Polynesia is settled. Samoa is taken over and breaks free from the Tui Tonga Empire. First European contact from British and Dutch in the 1700s. Missionaries bringing Christianity. Americans, British, and Germans all claim parts of Samoa. First Samoan civil war fought between rival Samoan factions, Second Samoan Civil War, Germany takes over for 14 years, East Islands become a US territory, Mao movement for independence, World War I, the UK creeps in, kicks out the Germans, Samoa becomes a territory of New Zealand, Spanish flu kills off a fifth of the population, 1962 independence, New Zealand's Helen Clark issues a formal apology for the incidents of the 20th century, Samoa's last king dies at age 95, Samoa switches time zones, Hobbes and Shaw save the world from evil, and here we are today. Some of the top notable people from Samoa that you guys suggested I mention in this episode include historical figures like Maliatoa Laupepa, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the first, Luaki Namulau Ulu Mamoe, Maliatoa Tanu Mafili the second, as well as Cardinal Pio Taufinu U. Tons of professional athletes like these, lots of boxers like these, weightlifters, rugby players, American football players, wrestlers, people in the business, arts, and entertainment area like KJ Apa, Robbie Magasiva. Jay Lagaaya, Beula Koale, Sima Urale, Nick Afoa, Paris Gobel, Albert Went, Aggie Gray, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And of course, there are so many famous musicians and artists and bands like these. I'm just gonna put a bunch of them up on the screen. And finally, just some miscellaneous ones. Latafale Auva'a, Amy Maslin Miller, Chief Cielu Avea, and the Circus of Samoa. Yeah, for such a small island nation, Samoans have really stuck themselves out as Samoan special. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, off to the last segment, the friend zone. Now, ocean island nations have always kind of been an interesting place when it comes to diplomacy because everything is so spread apart that you kind of need anyone within the vast open void to lean on. That being said, Samoa does have quite a few contacts in their Rolodex. Although it? Fiji is classified as Zealand? Melanesian, their close Zealand? proximity to Samoa helps them act as like a bridge between Melanesia and Polynesia. Business, travel, and trade are not only huge between them, both countries kind of piggyback off of each other as well. Fijians even have their own version of the Ava ceremony, and they even created their own Haka chant at sporting events like the Māori of New Zealand. Tonga is kind of like the best rival cousin. I mean, a long time ago, they did kind of take over Samoa in the Tui Tonga Empire, and there were numerous battles and wars between them, but that was like so long ago and everybody's forgotten about it. The two are close now. The countries and islands that culturally identify closest to Samoa, though, would probably be their immediate siblings, Tuvalu, and the three association states of New Zealand, Tokelau, Cook Islands, and Niue. Specifically, Tuvalu and Tokelau have the closest languages to Samoan. Some even say it's just a dialect. They all have very similar similar customs and cultures as well as family lineages as their ancestors fled to nearby islands, intermarried, and kept in touch pretty well. New Zealand is their biggest business partner and specifically plays a huge role in Samoa's affairs, and in 1962 they signed a treaty of friendship after independence. New Zealand has the largest Samoan population outside of Samoa, they are the largest hub of travel to Samoa, they are in charge of their military protection, and Samoa can request channels of communication to international organizations <laughs> through New Zealand. When nice. it comes to the ones closest to them though, Samoans will probably 
probably say the American territory of Samoa. Essentially, uh, they are the same people. Sure, one speaks with a Kiwi accent, the other speaks with an American. One drives on the right side, the other on the left. One plays rugby, the other one plays American football. But otherwise, same people. American Samoa actually had the chance to join them back in 1966 when the UN threw out the option, but surprisingly, they voted to stay as a territory of the US and take on US benefits. Nonetheless, both of them follow the same Fa'a Samoa system of life. They both have the Matai and Fale culture, and overall, they get each other the best. In Aww. conclusion, you cannot have Polynesia without Samoa. Everything between New Zealand, Hawaii, and Easter Island starts here. They are masters of the ocean, and if you are lucky to meet a Samoan, technically, you could address them by saying, Your Majesty. Stay tuned, San Marino is coming up next. I should have said Your Majesty, think I have met a Samoan, so that's awesome. Uh, <clears throat> But wow, definitely a lot of tradition, that which is really cool. And I'm kind of curious how the, I guess, you know, how that kind of all works, you know, kind of thing as far as like promotions and I don't know, just getting to be like the, the top dog in Samoa kind of thing. Because I know like a lot of traditions are involved in that. But anyways, this definitely seems like a lot, a very cool country. Um, a lot of tourism there. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of cool festivals to kind of see there. And I guess you can go there any time of year because the weather's apparently awesome all year round. But, you know, those who live there, let me know in the comments below the best time of year if you want to go visit there. It'd be great. But anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button below. And I hope you guys continue the journey with me through every country in the world. But I am out of here, guys. Have a good night. Peace. Woo! Fun, fun, fun.